Welcome back to the lab. Now today I want to talk about gyroscopic motion. Now if you go to the internet, you'll find all sorts of mathematical explanations for how gyros behave. However, I want to take the approach of not using any mathematics whatsoever and base this dynamic on Newton's first law of motion and the spinning action of the gyro wheel. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to talk about is how a spinning object is stable about its axis of rotation. So to do that, I'm going to use this rig. I've got my uh, wheel system, and I've got two strings attached to the axles. They go up to a beam, which is attached to a single string. Now this allows the system to rotate about a vertical axis. Now let's take a look at an animation to see how the system is going to behave. Here's a simple animation of the free hanging wheel system. Now in this animation, we want to focus on these two reference points, which are 180 degrees apart on the wheel. Now one point is on the front, or the right side of the wheel, and the other is on the back side of the wheel, towards the left. That's towards the screen. Now for a non-spinning system, if we apply an impulse to the axle of the wheel, the system will rotate in the counterclockwise direction as indicated by the arrow. Now as the system rotates, the two reference points on the wheel will move in the direction shown. The point on the right will move towards the right, and the point on the back will move towards the left. Now, let's take a look at the real system and see what really happens. Now, here's my system in a non-spinning mode, which means the wheel is not spinning. So if I apply an impulse to the axle, we see that the response is the system rotates around the vertical axis. And every time I apply that impulse, the system will rotate. Now, let's take a look and see what happens when the system is rotating. Now let's take a look at the system with the wheel spinning. Now the wheel will be rotating in the direction of the yellow arrows. When the impulse is applied to the wheel's axle, the initial response to the system is similar to the non-spinning case, and the system tries to rotate in the counterclockwise direction about the vertical axis, as indicated by the blue arrow. Now, as in the non-spinning case, the two points take up a lateral motion as indicated by the red arrows. And Newton's laws of motion say that this lateral motion will continue until some other force or torque is applied. And in this example, no other torques or impulses will be applied. And this means that even as the wheel rotates, the lateral motions of the two reference points remains constant. Now after the wheel rotates 180 degrees, the lateral motion of the points create a clockwise rotation about the vertical axis, which negates the previous counterclockwise rotation. So as the wheel turns, there is no net rotation about the vertical axis and the system stays pointed in the original direction. It is these constantly opposing rotational dynamics about the vertical axis that stabilizes the spinning wheel. Now let's take a look at the real system and see how it behaves. Now I have my wheel spinning. So now if I apply an impulse to the axle, the system does not want to rotate about the vertical axis. The axle wants to remain pointed in the original direction. That tells me the system is stable about the axis of rotation. That's pretty cool. Now, let's look at the concept of gyroscopic precession. Now, to demonstrate the concept of gyroscopic precession, I need to subject my wheel to a constant torque. Now, the best way to do this is to use gravity. So I'm going to suspend the wheel from one string, which is attached to only one axle, with the other axle free. Now, let's take a look at an animation to see what happens with a non-spinning system. The concept of gyroscopic precession is a little more difficult to explain. So we'll start off with a non-spinning case. Now, for gyroscopic precession to occur, we need to apply a constant torque to the system. Now, we can achieve this by suspending the wheel from only one axle at point A. Now the wheel has mass and it's acting at a certain distance from point A and so it creates a moment about point A. This is the constant torque being applied by gravity. Now when we release the wheel, the wheel will want to rotate due to that torque and fall downwards. Now let's take a look at the real system and see how it behaves. Now let's see if that animation is accurate. I have my system here. I've got the string coming down to one axle. I'm supporting the other axle with my hand. So when I let go, the system will rotate. 
So sure enough, that's what's happening. So as I release this side, the system begins to rotate. And you notice the motion at the top of the wheel and the bottom of the wheel. It starts moving in that direction and this direction. So now let's take a look at animation to see what happens if the system is actually spinning. Now let's look at the system while the wheel is spinning. What we want to do is focus on these two reference points. One on the front face of the wheel at the top and one on the back face of the wheel at the bottom. Now, when the axle is released, gravity creates a torque about point A, as shown by the blue arrow. So at the moment of release, the system will want to rotate in the clockwise direction about point A, just like in the non-spinning case. This rotation causes the top point to start moving to the right and the bottom point to start moving to the left, just like in the non-spinning case. Now, for simplicity, let's assume no other forces are applied to the system after the initial motion. If we make this assumption, Newton says the two points will continue to move in their respective directions. However, in this case, the wheel is spinning about the horizontal axis. As the wheel spins 90 degrees, the original motion of the two points makes the system rotate in the counterclockwise direction about the vertical axis, as shown by the blue arrow. And this rotation about the vertical axis is known as gyroscopic precession. The wheel continues to spin, and after the wheel spins another 90 degrees, the continuing lateral motion of the two points makes the system rotate in a counterclockwise direction about point A, as shown by the blue arrow. This new rotation negates the initial clockwise rotation that momentarily existed when the wheel was originally released. Let's reinforce this idea by just focusing on the net motion of the bottom point after 180 degrees of rotation. At the bottom, the lateral motion of the spot creates a counterclockwise rotation about point A. However, at the initial release of the wheel, the moment about point A was in the clockwise direction. These two opposing moments negate the dynamic effects of each other and ultimately stop the lateral motion of the spot. While not shown in this diagram, the same holds true for the point on the back side of the wheel. Looking at it another way, the cancelled moments means there's no net external moment acting around point A over 180 degrees of rotation of the wheel. Newton's first law says, since there's no external moment acting on the wheel, no rotational motion about point A will exist. As a result, the axle will not rotate and will appear to be magically suspended in air. But there's more to the explanation. Now, even though the red point has no lateral motion at the bottom of the rotation, you need to keep in mind that this process is really a continuous process and other points on the wheel are given lateral motion at the top of the rotation, as depicted by these purple points. We also need to keep in mind that the wheel is a rigid system and the motions of each point affect the motions of the others. So, when the motions of the points at the 90 degree position cause a system to rotate about the vertical axis, they cause all other points to also move in a consistent manner. This means the points at the bottom of the rotation that briefly had no lateral motion will then pick up a leftward lateral motion as they swing up the back side of the system. This is why the precession motion is not negated about the vertical axis. When the point reaches the top of the wheel, there's no lateral motion due to the geometry of the system. However, the process begins all over again and the gravitational torque imparts a motion back to the right. This series of events keeps the axle horizontal and generates the motion known as gyroscopic precession. So let's take a look at the real system and see how it behaves. Okay, so now I have my wheel spinning. So let's see if the theory is correct. I let go of the axle, and sure enough, the axle remains mysteriously horizontal, and you see the rotation around the vertical axis, and that is the gyroscopic precession. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's take this spinning wheel into a giant gimbal system and create a giant gyroscope. Here's a diagram of a simple mechanical gyro. It consists of a gimbal frame, an outer gimbal, an inner gimbal, and a spinning rotor. 
Now the mechanical gyro can rotate about the pitch axis, the roll axis, and the yaw axis. So now let's take a look at the giant gyro. Now, if I stick my spinning wheel into a giant gimbal system, I can create my own giant gyroscope. So let's spin it up and see how it behaves. Well, I hope you have a better appreciation for the concept of gyroscopic motion. Well, I hope to see you next time on Labrat Scientific.